Hello, I'm at 5G World and I'm here with Dario Talmezio, my colleague from Omdia. Dario, hi, nice to see you again after a long, long time. Nice to um, see you in person. Yeah, I mean, first event, I think, for both of us for quite a, quite a while and it's good to, good to kind of see people in person. Uh, and I mean, I was quite impressed that the floor was quite full. There was a lot of, uh, not, not a lot of empty space, um, which is encouraging, I guess, but... Even people standing at the back. Exactly, oh, exactly, yeah. Um, I mean, you've been, you've been watching a lot of the early keynotes and presenting as well and um, doing some moderating. I mean, what are your feelings, I guess, about the, the mood of the show, I guess, and, and people's thoughts about 5G at the moment? I mean, generally speaking, one of the most interesting thing is, is a, a fairly upbeat mood. Um, if you, as I recall, my last in-person event was still about how, what are we going to do with this 5G? Uh, do customers want it? Are they going to pay for it? But today we had loads of um, references to service providers really inc increasing their top line with 5G. And um, which is encouraging because 5G is really is still very early days and it still is a, mainly a consumer proposition. Um, and in fact, if you were in my keynotes, it still doesn't exist. I mean, the real 5G is still yet to come and the real 5G, we know what we mean by it, is when a standalone is introduced and is when all the capabilities of 5G are introduced and exposed to partners. So thinking that not that that doesn't exist yet and we're already seeing some positive stories i think it's very encouraging and also i think what helped helped a lot this morning was the fact that people met physically face to face for the first time in long long time and everybody was a bit excited maybe nervous as well maybe a little bit emotional as well um, yeah, certainly i was but uh, definitely there is um, a bit of an excitement yeah and as, as you say i mean it's nice to hear some upbeat stories about carriers that have been able to improve revenues because there's i think maybe a bit more focus now on the commercial side of 5g and what it can do for the business case in terms of sales growth uh, I mean you've you got some thoughts on that to do with standalone the launch of standalone and the evolution of the network I guess towards edge models some of the stuff that we see going on with the hyperscalers but I don't know I mean it sounds like some of these business plans and that on that front on the operator side are very nascent should we say if we're going to be kind in some cases they are I think um, the, it was very interesting in the panel discussion on edge there were a few questions questions about the monetization of Edge, um, actually specifically on the commercial models of Edge. And unanimously all the operators said, well, I don't even want to talk about this, it's too early for me to talk about commercial models for Edge, uh, which is quite telling about where they are at the moment. I'm, I'm sure if you ask the same question to Amazon or, or uh, Microsoft or Google, they probably would have a different answer. Yeah. To that. I mean, do you think it's the right way around to get it, though? You know, that they, because they obviously are trying to do things, I think, on the technology side and evolve to that. And it's curious in a way they haven't sort of formulated clear ideas about the, the commercial side of things. I, I think we are very much in proof of concept uh, type of mode. We are in implementation mode. There are obviously important examples in the market, but uh, in terms of how to commercialize it or what commercial models are going to be there, it's probably too early. One comment I think was really interesting is, is, let, is let's stop talking about the various flavor of clouds. Let's talk about workloads and let's talk about what does this specific workload need rather than does it need to be private, does it need to be public, does it need to be on-prem? Is that, okay, let's look at the characteristic of, of this workload and, and see how we can address that. Yeah. I think that, that was a very, very good comment from Telenor, I believe. Yes, yeah. I mean, what, what's your feeling, though? Are you, are you sort of optimistic about, you know, if we look two or three years out and you, and you mentioned standalone, we've got edge rollout happening. Are you, are you upbeat at all about the sort of telco business case, or do you feel... I mean, one thing I write about quite a lot, I guess, is the, is the public cloud companies and, and what kind of threat they pose to, to telcos, you know, whether they are collaborators or whether ultimately they're going to emerge as the winners and we just see operators become dumb pipe, even more dumb pipes, I guess. But. I mean, there are a couple of interesting data points, uh, which I, I wish my memory was better. But uh, just to summarize it, 
Um, the combined hyperscale business uh, will surpass the telecom business in revenue terms for the first time in history next year. Right, wow. Okay. I didn't know that. So there was an acceleration during the pandemic of the hyperscale business and uh, which was sustained um, and that did not have an equivalent in uh, in the telco service provider business. So they moved much faster. But also they moved much faster in terms of capabilities of uh, creating partnerships. We talk about ecosystems and and it's interesting that you know while service providers are now establishing these 5G centers of excellence in some cases with the hyperscale operators hyperscale operators are already working around ecosystems they've already been building ecosystems yeah. so in a way they already have an, a market advantage if we want to see as these two players has been just opposed if if we want to do that yeah. then the the hyperscale operators already have an advantage because they are already working in an ecosystem approach the reality is that though it looks like the, the destiny of telco service providers and hyperscale operator seems to be more interrelated interwoven yeah. and going in the same direction so i'm not sure it would be fair still to talk about enemies, frenemies, or co uh, competition or cooperation. I think it's, we've moved more into the cooperation side of this, de this debate. Yeah, I mean, they, they seem to be showing up all over the place in yeah. telecom in the last 18 months, don't they? I mean, every week there seems to be another deal between a, a big operator and a, and a hyperscaler of some, of some kind or another, from my perspective. But, uh... yeah, ab absolutely. And who knows, maybe one day this these two businesses will start merging, not only on service level. Yeah, I mean, that would be interesting to see. Yeah. But, well, we've got, we've got another day, day and a half uh, left, so um, let's reconvene at some point and, Absolutely. Uh, and, and see what's happened. And what, what, lovely what to see you in person. Are. Good to see you, Dario, Cheers. and thanks for joining me. Thank you, yeah.